Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I will show you how to use IDA to debug and patch a file, a CrackMe. So go and download this CrackMe and then put it somewhere in your desktop like I have here. Inside of it, there is a CrackMe1.exe. Let's run it first and see what it does. So all it does is ask you to please enter the serial key and if you were just to type any number and you click on check you get the wrong serial key try again so we are now going to use ida to crack this crack me one so let's get started so we'll open ida i'm using ida free version click ok and then click a new project and then go and open the crack me one from the desktop and here click OK here click no and let it disassemble and analyze now let's go and look for some strings so go to view Open sub views and select strings. Scroll down and look for the messages that will give you a hint on how to solve this. And here you find congrats. So let's double click on this string and it cross references you to this data section. And in the data section, the congrats string also have a cross reference to the function which uses it so let's double click and follow this cross reference and we land into the part where the congress message box is being shown on the left is the congress message box on the right is the sorry wrong serial key message box so our objective is to try to get it to come to this part and show the congress so to do that we can analyze the code up here and we see that over here there's a test if the test ex is zero then jump not zero will go to here sorry wrong zero key so we want ex to be zero so to ensure ex is zero we have to find out what sets the value of ex so we want EX to be 0 and we see up here this XOR EX, EX will set it to 0 so we want this to happen so let's see whether this happens so to find out whether this actually happens we can put a breakpoint somewhere up here this part here so that we will see whether it goes to this path over here or it goes to a different path so let's put a breakpoint to put a breakpoint, we can select here and click click on the debugger and breakpoints, add breakpoint. The shortcut key is F2. So after you add breakpoint, you can now run. Make sure the debugger is selected here and then click on run. Here click on yes. And now the dialog is open, ask you to enter the serial key. We will enter a wrong zero and click on check and so it has hit our breakpoint and the blinking arrow in green shows that it is going to go to the right and this is bad we don't want it to go to the right we want it to go to the left so that it will take this path and come down over here and run this XOR to set EX to zero so we can reverse that now in order to reverse that, we come up here and we will assemble a JNZ to become a JZ. So select on this one, presently is JNZ. So we edit here, go down to patch program. And then here we click on assemble and we change the instruction from JNZ to JZ. That will reverse the jump. And JNZ and JZ use the same number of bytes so it will not overwrite overrun the, the rest of the instructions click ok and now you can close this 
So now we step over this and by using F8, F8, or we can even go to debugger and click on F8 over here, step over. So now it has gone to the left because we have reversed it. And now over here, we want to know where it's going. So we have to step F8 again. And now the red arrow is blinking. That means it's going to go to the right, which is no good. We want to go it, let it go to the left. So here also we have to assemble a J and Z. So we select on this one, come up to edit, and come back here, patch program, assemble, and here we we reverse the J Z to J and Z. And as I mentioned, JZ and JNZ use the same number of bytes, so it will not overwrite the uh, the instructions that come below. So click OK to assemble it, and now we close. So now we press F8 again to see whether it goes to the left. It should go to the left. Yes, so it has gone to the left. Now it's over here. And it's going to come here and XOR. So let's F8. It has XOR, EX. So now you see the register EX is 0. That is what we want, alright? We want EX to be 0. And the other thing, reason why you want EX to be 0, because over here, the message box, the message box API needs EX to be 0. I will explain later. So now, uh, over here, let's continue to F8. And now when it tests EX, EX will be 0 and no. And now it's going to jump to the left because the red arrow is blinking. That means it's going to go to here and, and, and call the message box function with the parameter. Congrats, well done. So now if we go and look at the API, the API for, for the message box, the API for the message box is found in the MSTN documentation. So message box has these parameters. The first parameter is the handle. So this handle here is the EX that we, that needs to be zero. A handle to the owner of the window or the message box to be created. If this parameter is null, meaning zero, the message box has no owner. So we want it to have no owner. So we want this to be zero. If it is anything other than zero, the message box will not show. So that's why it's important that the push, this one, needs to be zero. As you I have explained before, whenever you are going to call an API, before you call it, you will push the parameters to the stack, which is down here. And the way it is done is that Whatever is pushed is in reverse order from the API. This is the first parameter to message box, second parameter, third parameter, and so on. So now let's see. We are going to F8. And now it's going to push. Congrats there. It's going to push well done. Uh, and then now it's going to push EX, which is now zero, which is good. There you go, zero. So this is the first parameter to message box, second parameter, third parameter, and fourth parameter. So these are the four parameters that are pushed to the stack in to make it ready for the message box API to be called. This is exactly what we want according to the MSDN documentation. So if you take a look at the MSDN documentation again, let me just remind you, this is the first parameter second parameter, third parameter, fourth parameter. So that's what we got. First, second, third, fourth parameter. Now we are going to step over this by F8 and the message box is shown. Well done. Alright, so now we can OK this and run all the way. Alright, now we can stop the debugger. And now we are ready to patch the original file. So to patch the original file, the original file that we need to patch is this one. Presently, it has not patched the original file yet, 
it has only patched the database. So we need to patch the original file. So to do that, we click on, we click on edit. We click on patch program. And now we go to the last one here. Apply patches to input file. And then here, this is the input file that you want to patch. But before we patch it, we create a backup. Then we click OK. Alright, so now we go back. We can see there is a backup here. Alright, and this is the patch file. So in case you made a mistake, you can have a, still have a backup of the original before it's being patched. So let's try to run this now. The patch file. And now we enter anything, whatever. Doesn't matter. We click on check. And we have got a good message. So we have successfully patched crack me one. So this is how we can use EDA to debug and reverse and crack uh, crack me and also to patch it. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching.